what kind of culture for your teams, what kind of processes are there internally to ensure, you know, once again, given the scope of mistakes there in the code with bugs and all those things, to still ensure that the, the hygiene of code is good? It may be good to, to first say that we have different applications uh, about the uh, various applications that we have, and that also implies the levels of security. When we talk about the grids, right, we have systems in place that um, really control uh, switch gear that determine if there's a grid has power or not. Of course, that is critical infrastructure that has to be secured uh, through configuration, continuous monitoring. That's uh, also like with cyber, right? It's really uh, security is utmost important. Uh, but also on the other spectrum, we have, I don't know, HR software, we have um, uh, business uh, analytics going on. So uh, these are less critical. Of course, uh, they might have still a uh, huge impact also financially, but um, it's not the availability, for example, is not as much of an issue. Now, um, we are uh, first off trying to uh, identify what application is to what level of security. And that is something we do for all our applications internally to uh, gauge for uh, how uh, is it set with the availability, um, with the, the confidentiality, and also the integrity, right? These three uh, pillars. And if we know that, we have at least a level of uh, quality for by which each team has to abide by. And this is something that was sort of in place already uh, over, I don't know, years. But really this year we stepped up uh, this effort with a team we call Mission Control, which is outside of the development teams, but has the main goal to, uh, on the one hand, uh, see how it's done with the quality, but also help the teams to really improve. If we look at the life cycle of the code that is written, um, of course, you folks started doing open source recently, so you do have like a lot of proprietary code base. I mean, within every company has some proprietary, some open source. What I want to understand is like when you write proprietary code, the users are internally, the feedback loop is different versus when you write code for open source, because you yourself are not even deploying it. You have put the code out there, someone else is like, the only difference with internal versus external is that internally, you, whatever system you have, you'll get feedback from the user team. Externally, they might actually put a fix themselves, you know, hey, this is a, so can you talk about the, have you? Yeah, 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 certainly. And um, I'd like to highlight that with one example we have, that is power grid model. So this is a calculation engine we use to calculate the grid. And this is uh, critical in a sense that we use it for lots of analyses. So um, maybe not as a cyber uh, type of, of security, but at least the, the integrity, the results have to be sound. And what I see with that project in particular is that there's a lot of mature uh, development going on. Right, the team is really stepping up their game for internal uh, use, but also externally, that right? we wanna make the best project, uh, product as possible. So they verify all the calculations for each release against other software doing something similar, against uh, manual written um, uh, calculations to ensure that the calculations, the main purpose of the software is sound and also providing uh, a, a good API for usage to prevent misuse uh, and also yeah, add documentation and whatever. Uh, so yeah, really step up the, the quality level of this product. And I think the open source nature of this really helps also because you don't know what the other one is, uh, how it is being used. So you're forced to sort of uh, take the extra step to make it good. Right, and we are adding one more layer that even your open source code base is, base is not going just on uh, a specific GitHub repository or GitLab repository. It's, it's part of Linux Foundation energy as well. Uh, so talk a bit about what impact that has on the quality and the security of the pro code base. Yeah, also another major impact, I think, um, that before we had open source projects, of course, taking a project from in internal to open source projects, uh, open source code, means that uh, we have to be sure about the quality. We uh, check and uh, once it's open source and continuous development, security is important there. 
But what you see uh, with it being open under the governance of the Linux Foundation Energy is that Linux Foundation Energy really puts security um, uh, as a priority. And so every year we have a project life cycle, which is it's good to uh, have all these projects go to, to determine uh, which level are you? Are you still in, a, in an incubation phase or are you going to be uh, up until graduate? That determines um, not only ad the adoption uh, you have in terms of uh, other participants, but also the, the quality level and that is tied to security. So for a project to grow on this uh, maturity level, they have to have um, a meet certain security standards dictated by the OpenSSF best practices, for example. And this is a reminder, a yearly reminder for a project to say, okay, we need, really need to step up our game in terms of security to um, uh, further the project also for other aspects. Can you also talk about the importance of the whole software bill of materials or as bombs? not only just for internal consumption, but also for external parties. One example you could do is just take the source code and build everything internally, secure everything internally, and just then it would be only for Aliando's purpose. Our main goal is to push every effort regarding security, securing the software out there and to ensure that the, the product, like a, a, a Docker container or a Python package, that that is secure. Uh, and then we can internally maybe do some some small verifications to ensure it um, but then we can use it right away because we have guaranteed the quality and the security uh, uh, on a community level now uh, to be when you use it and you want to know okay what else is in here and is there still something uh, that is current all these libraries are they the latest version uh, do they have known vulnerabilities then you need uh, a, t a report of everything that is in there, especially with, uh, with Docker containers, because oftentimes you all get an uh, operating system layer with all the libraries that are uh, necessary to run the software. And um, having an SBOM that specifies what is in there is really helpful in this case, because you can run that analysis of is this still current at any time, as long as you have that SBOM.